What's up, Warrior Rising family? Welcome back. I'm Alyssa. I host this amazing segment where we get to talk to amazing veterans who have competed, who have incredible businesses, and are within the Warrior Rising tribe. So today we have second place winner at our very first shower in Detroit, James Laguerre. He has an incredible business. It is not the last time we are going to be working with him, and we'll kind of get into the details of what doors have opened and collaborations that are on the rise and he has his work cut out for him so without further ado welcome james hey thank you Alyssa. i really appreciate it <laughs> no, absolutely no super excited did you expect to leave with more work when you left detroit or what? um i mean i went i went into detroit not knowing what to expect i have yeah. never pitched my business before um i've never been a part of an organization like this with <clears throat> sorry with the build up working with Reggie and Preston and yourself and a few of the other you know, individuals, they had really pushed with us, you know, the the grant money is great, but the networking that you are going to see there is really what's going to, you know, push your business. So really try to lean into that. And, you know, my my job when I was in the military and, the, and contracting was I was an Intel guy. Mm -hmm. So I was really comfortable with briefing. Um, I just never had to brief myself and my own stuff yeah. before but i was also really comfortable with networking so i was really excited for that and i could not have predicted the amount yeah. of things that happened uh at, at yeah. the event even just in the first night like mm -hmm. it was it was insane <laughs> that's awesome so the, <clears throat> the people that are a little confused right now like tell us about your business what is it so <clears throat> It's called Laguerre's Wood Shop, but uh, I don't do a ton of woodworking anymore. Um, it started out that way, you know, to build tables and stuff like that. But we were living in Hawaii, and um, people really don't like spending like two to three thousand dollars on shipping a table when the table didn't even cost that much. So, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is real scratchy. Okay. Um, so I eventually shifted and started making. Uh, rings out of like whiskey barrel staves and stuff like that like wedding bands i didn't really think anything of it until people really started to reach out to me for personal pieces with you know cremation ashes or like wood from their the the barn their grandpa built you know 50 some odd years ago and you know a friend of mine a marine reached out and asked me if i would make a ring out of iwo jima beach sand and so I said, yeah, of course, man, send it to me and I'll, I'll go through and make it. And that is kind of when everything really took off. Um, it was the first first year of doing the business full time because the first three I was still contracting in Hawaii. And this really, this caught the eye of Frank Mantow of Crowns Ready to Eat. And he introduced me to Jason of Warrior Rising mm -hmm. and everything went nuts. Um, so a lot of what I do is I work with battlefield sand which i call it the valor collection so afghanistan iraq omaha beach i actually just got sand from gold beach and sword beach today for a ring that uh, warrior rising and i are partnering on for the yeah. 81st anniversary of d-day um mm -hmm. so that's gonna be pretty spoiler cool. alert yeah spoiler alert yeah <laughs> um, and then uh, i still do some whiskey barrel uh rings i'm actually starting conversations with two distilleries in Kentucky um, about awesome. having my rings in their like gift shop showroom area. And then my stadium series line has, you know, wood and plastic seat material from stadiums all over the world uh, that gets put into rings, including some like Candlestick Park, which aren't around anymore. So I, I, I like to consider myself as non-traditional of a ring maker as possible because I don't yeah. think you'll, there's very few like basic plain designs mm -hmm. that you'll see in my shop. Um, that's just kind of, yeah. kind of what I like to go for. Yeah. And for everyone, like if you watch his socials and everything, I'm telling you like in person, it's way yeah. more incredible because I'm like a picture says a thousand words, but getting to hold it in your hand, you're like. This is from where? <laughs> so it's it's really cool. It's really, really neat. So I love that we're going to continue working too. And I know there's other veterans. Like what I do after these events is I just super connect people um, because I see one and I'm like, oh, there is such a cool 
collaboration in the future too. And I know that's what the other staff has been doing. We just see that potential and it's, it's really incredible. So what, um, getting second place, like, holy crap, how did that feel? What were you expecting it? Um, were you expecting oh, first? Like, what, <laughs> how did that feel? How does when, it feel? So I, I don't remember pitching. Uh, I just kind of, you know, blacked, blacked out. out when I went up there, <laughs> but when I came off stage, a couple of the competitors came up to me and they were like, I think you just won. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, I think you just won. I was like, cool. Like I really appreciate it, but you know, it's in the hand of the hands of the judges. They've got their criteria and Lorena black of she served um, yeah. as a competitor. And she kind of tapped me on the arm and she was like, James Dixon just said, when you walked off stage, like that's the mark to beat. And I was like, what? That's wild. James Dixon said that. That's high praise right there. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, we're all talking and stuff after the event. And uh, Jill walks up to me right before we go on stage. And she yeah. goes, so do you know what you're going to say? And I went, what? Uh -uh. She's like, she like, when you win, do you know what you're going to say? And I went, I, I don't feel like I've like there. There's too many, you know, variables and too many different businesses here, like a ring maker. I don't see me jumping up in the first place and I'm not going to write my victory speech before anybody even says anything to me. And when they announced, <clears throat> when they announced, uh, Fu at third place, yeah. in my mind, I said, ah, I, I got fifth. Like t my uh, top uh, placement was fifth place right there. If, if Fu got third, I know like there are other veterans that were just way better than me that got second and first. And then when Jason said my name for a second, I was just like, hold on, what? Yeah. All right, that, that's pretty incredible. You know, walked up, shook his hand. And then when he when he announced the winner, like Mike and <clears throat> Mike and AJ, those two guys are two of the most genuine, like incredible people I have ever met. And couldn't be happier for him. Uh, I couldn't be happier about the second place. Like, yeah, I called my mom on the way home because I drove home and she was like, oh, well, second place is still pretty good. I was like, if you think I'm just need right now <laughs> you're crazy because i'm on cloud nine yeah, uh, yeah absolutely but, yeah I, I shook jason's hand when i got off stage and he said he was like we're not done yet man and i was like i know i was like strap in dude because it's gonna be a wild ride and he was like that's what i like to hear <laughs> <laughs> like i'm ready and like yeah. yeah we're gonna see you next year and possibly at some other showers as well um if you can make it out which is awesome mm -hmm. but yeah um i like accidentally heard who won. Like, I mean, the staff was discussing it and I was kind of like, because I like to see like what I think too and like how that kind of yeah. works in. But it was really cool. And I was like, I can't say anything. Just, you know, act, act like it's new news when it comes up there. Because usually I try not to hear. So I'm like just as surprised as everyone else. But yeah. um, I knew you were going to be up there though. So, because you did incredible work, like I said. And it's Thank an you. awesome story. Thank you. Um, so what would you say your key takeaway or what's a moment from the Detroit event that really stood out to you? Oh man, really? There's, and I think Mike touched on this a little bit. There's a lot of organizations out there that talk the talk. Um, a lot of them. To, to show up to this event, and I felt very unprepared. And it wasn't anything on Warrior Rising. I just, I felt like I was running a million miles an hour. And, you know, I was supposed to do Salt Lake City. And Jason emailed me in July and just said, how does Detroit in August sound? And I was like, let's go, man. Like, let's do it. And Preston yeah. called me and was like, do you have all your stuff ready? And I was like, I forgot about that part. No, I don't have <laughs> all yeah. my stuff ready. So I, I raced to get that done. But like <clears throat> showing up as, as someone like me who felt like I was kind of a, a, an outsider of this entire thing, you immediately feel like you are a part of the group. You immediately feel like you're, you know, a member of the family. You can ask any questions, you can, yep. you know, they're, they're there to give you help. But just the fact that everybody there is on the same team, everybody is trying to help veterans grow and grow their business. And the fact that it didn't end when I hopped in the car and left to, to drive back down to Tennessee, that was the, because, I mean, you see these things all the time where you go to these events and, you know, the emotion, the adrenaline is super high and everybody's yeah. so stoked and wants to help and wants to do all this stuff. And then a couple of days later, you come down from that and crash and you're reaching out to people like, Hey, I was talking to you about this. I was talking about that. And nobody responds. You're like, 
all right, yeah. well, I guess it was just in the moment, you know, we were all having a great yeah. time and helping each other. But now, you know, now that we're not face to face, different story with Warrior Rising. Couldn't couldn't say anything negative about, you know, what you guys are doing and, and the amount of things you guys have already done, not just for my business, but for veterans all over. Like I had. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the company, but they're they're gonna be at the women's business shower. They reached out and they're like, Hey, I saw you got second place. Would you mind, you know, hopping on a video call to talk about the experience and kind of give me some tips on my pitch? Because I'm going in yeah. in uh December. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah. yeah, sure, no problem. But like as soon as the posts go up and they show like this is first, this is second, this is third your social media starts to blow up with other warrior rising members and contestants yeah. and finishers. And they're just like, I want to collab. I want to do this. I want to yeah. do that. And you're like, man, this is what I've been waiting for and working towards for the last four years. And it's, it's just an incredible experience. No, absolutely. And that was, uh, I think one of the people I sent your way to was three forks reclamation. Yeah. Um, just cause in the wood world, I'm like, there's gotta be something there. I know we're also working with them on some stuff too. Um, and that's what I love about this community. Um, and you hit the nail on the head with that. I mean, it's an ongoing, like you can say networking, but there's so much more when it comes to cross collaboration and empowering, you know, other veterans to, to mm -hmm. really, I think collaboration is just massive. And I love that you can have a competitive nature and element to it, but at the same time where like people are genuinely happy to shake your hand and be like, well done. Like yeah. uh, it should have been you. And it, it was, you know, <laughs> so I, <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's really awesome. Um, yeah. And you kind of already talked about how you heard about warrior rising and your thoughts on it. If you could kind of summarize and this helps, you know, this helps uh, to us build that awareness as well mm. but if you could summarize like what warrior rising is i used to ask veterans like if you could summarize it in one word one to three words what what would that be oh man um <laughs> it's tricky i mean it, it truly is a community you know when when you're in the military you have that camaraderie that brotherhood that closeness to everybody and then you get out and everybody's scattered all over and you know, we're connected by Facebook and Instagram and stuff, but we talk maybe once every seven months. But everybody, when they leave the military, is looking for that community again. They're looking for that sense of, of you know, familiarity with a group. And that's a big thing that I've seen just since the business shower ended a couple weeks ago with with this organization is, you know, they're you know, I think one of the things that we keep saying is uh, like, you know, we just welcome to the tribe, like you're in yeah. and yeah. and that's kind of a, it's a cool thing to hear and just be like, and feel it and believe yeah. like, oh yeah, man, I'm in, like I can reach out to any of these people at any point mm -hmm. in time and, and be okay. And yeah. I think that's a, that's a big thing of like what I see warrior rising is, is just a, a giant community and a giant network yeah no it truly is um what advice would you give to other veterans that are leaning into entrepreneurship maybe they're brand new maybe they already have an idea what what's that piece of advice or pieces um it's gonna be a lot more work than you think uh when when i stepped away last june to do this full time like i became the maker the photographer the video guy the editor the marketing person you know, you got to do all the taxes and business codes and all of that stuff. And it, it can be overwhelming. Reach out to people, reach out to, to organizations that you know will, will help out 100%. Look up Warrior Rising. I looked for months when we first moved out to Tennessee for grants. And they were all these like, oh, well, if you want to do this grant, you have to have this much of this and this much of that and be doing this for so long. and like literally when, when Frank came out to visit the shop and he started talking about Warrior Rising, I was like, I've been looking for this this entire time. I've been looking for this specific thing and I don't know how I didn't find it. <laughs> like, yeah, um, Not good. Working on that SEO. Uh, Promise yeah. you. Anyways. <laughs> the other thing too is just believe in what you're doing, but believe in in your product. That imposter syndrome is a real thing and it can be a real 
motivation killer. And I felt it all the way up until Jason told me I finished second place. It was, it can be, imposter syndrome alone can be a business killer. Don't let it yeah. take over, you know, always be looking for new ways to expand and grow your business and always be reaching out to people. Always be reaching out to network or collaborate. The worst thing that someone can say to you is no, that's fine. No, okay, move on and go to go to the next one. Eventually you're going to hit just like I did with Stumbling Upon Warrior Rising and, and the people there who genuinely love the work that I do. Like a lot of people say it, but I can see it when you guys are walking up to me and like, oh, you come here. I got to show you the stuff that this guy does. Yeah. It's incredible. I'm like, they really believe in what I'm doing here. Like that's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, we do. Um, how would you say your business reflects like uh, values that you personally hold or values that you learned in the military? For me, it's always been about that accountability and that integrity. Like if I go through and I'm going to put a piece together, I'm putting it together. I'm not going to outsource it to somebody else to build the entire thing. And then it it gets shipped from me. And I'm like, look, I made this when I didn't. But it's also like when I when I was an NCO in the military, I was a very empathetic NCO. I tried to take care of my soldiers as best I could rather than like yelling at them. I would, I would tell them I was disappointed in them. I think you and Mike yeah. kind of touched on that in his <laughs> uh, talk as well. But being there for someone is a is a big thing that I try to do my entire life. And it's a weird thing to say, but with some of these custom rings that people reach out for, they're they're reaching out because they lost a family member or a, a you know family pet or something like that. And to have that back and forth conversation with them and show them the amount of care that is going to go into their piece that is unique just to them. I think it gives them a sense of closure to a, to a certain extent of like, yeah. but it also gives them a sense of trust in me that mm-hmm. I'm going to go through and do the right thing and, you know, treat their, the material that they send me with as much respect and, and care as possible. For me right now, it's, it's just me running everything on paper, but eventually as we go through and start to expand and hire people and, you know, we want to hire veterans uh, specifically, yeah. But that's when a lot of the NCO training and leadership training is going to start to come into play because now it's not just me. Yeah. I've got other people that I got to take care of and worry about and focus on. So I think once we get to that level, that's when the sergeant side will come out a little bit more. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, can you share, like for a lot of entrepreneurs out there, not every day is going to be, you know, sunshine, rainbows, everything goes perfectly, right? I know we've talked offline and we're just like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm running around you know, and, and drink from a fire hose half the time. Yeah. So can you share a moment when maybe you were faced with that idea of like, I want to give up or, you know, this is like, what am I doing? How did you push through that? that moment? Um, so that moment actually happened several times in the past, like seven, eight months, yeah. um, especially like when you're out in the shop and it's a hundred plus degrees and you're dying of sweat yeah. and yeah. you're making all these different products, you're posting them up on you know, online and everything, and there's no traction whatsoever. There's no comments, there's no likes, there's no orders. And for me, I lean heavily on Ashley and Christian. Um, And I remember one night, it's a really, really rough week. You know, all week I had been working and posting stuff, and I just wasn't getting to where I, I wanted to be. And because of that, I wasn't bringing in any, any money. And I told Ashley, I said, I think I'm done. Like, I think I need to just give up. Like, there's no point in me suffering out there for, you know, the, the what little I'm getting back from you know, the community, essentially. Yeah. And I said, I feel like crap because I'm not contributing financially and I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And she was like, what are you talking about? She was like, if you're stressed about this stuff and you're worried that I'm worried about this stuff, don't be. She said, when I told you to quit contracting, and take this on full time, I knew the first couple of years were going to be rough. But moving from Hawaii to Tennessee, financially, we were much more comfortable. Me being able to stay at home and work meant that while Ashley was working, anything that came up, whether it was, we got to go get groceries, or Christian's got to be picked up from school because he's sick, or he's got to be driven out to a football game two hours away, I could jump in and, and handle that with, you know, no problem. She was like, that's your contribution, and it's paying off more than you think to allow me to be able to do my job 
And her telling me that immediately all that weight and all that stress came off. And I was just like, okay, like when you've got someone like that in your corner who can look at you on your worst day, when you're saying this dream that I have, I want to quit because it's not going as fast as I thought it would. It's not picking up as fast as I thought it would. And for them to just say, don't worry about it. We got it. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. We got it. And that, that really saved a lot of, of, negative thoughts and and you know really negative talk self-talk that i had for myself in the early months of you know quitting and doing this whole thing full time it was very yeah. stressful <laughs> no i bet yeah your your circle matters especially when it's that immediate circle of people in your life you know that look up to you um so i love to hear that cuz it's all community and your circle it matters people if you take anything yeah. from this but um we'll kind of end on a little note of like what's on the horizon what's the legacy you want to leave and let us know where we can find Ligier's Woodshop um what's on the horizon oh gosh uh <laughs> everything yeah there's so uh D-Day uh next yep. year is on the horizon um the Army Navy game is on the horizon some potential opportunities with um the Medal of Honor Foundation, uh, yep. thanks to awesome. a connection I made at the Warrior Rising event. Never would have known this individual prior to this event. Let's yeah. just put that out there right now. So this is some of the stuff that you guys can expect if you show up to these events. Uh, but awesome. yeah, the legacy that I want to leave, I just want to, I want to have fun doing what I'm doing. I'm a maker first and foremost, but I want to be able to teach veterans how to how to heal through making you know my mental health has been a big thing that i've i've worked through with all of this stuff that i've been doing and i've lost a lot of friends to mental health issues and and you know their battles and stuff and to be able to just go into a shop and sit down and focus on making a thing that you never knew how to make before and at the end of the day you can hold this ring or pen or cutting board or whatever in your hand and just go, holy crap, I made this thing. Yeah. It gives you a new sense of purpose and kind of keeps you going a little bit further. Definitely. So with that in closing, where can we find you on socials, website, oh, yeah. all that good stuff? <laughs> no, you're good. Um, promo. So if you search, <laughs> yeah, sorry. If you, uh, if you search Laguerre's Woodshop, that's spelled L-E-G-I-E-R-S, Woodshop. You'll find me on pretty much anything. We're still working through the the kinks with the website. So most of the stuff has gone through Instagram or Facebook or an Etsy store that I occasionally use. Um, because Etsy's a little, you know, a little difficult to wanna wanna work with with the fees and stuff. But yeah, yeah. Legear's Woodshop, you can find me pretty much anywhere. Awesome. Well, we love to hear. Uh, thank you so much for sharing some of your time with us and sharing your story. I know we will be seeing each other at a multitude of events in the near future. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Congratulations again. And, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you as well. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Anyone listening, Warrior Rising is the premier nonprofit for veteran entrepreneurs. As you can hear, there's networking, there's community, but a uh, the long form is, you know, it's, you got that, that community connection, that um, redefining your purpose through business. So look us up at warriorrising.org and let's help build America through veteran owned business. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.